what do 19th century abolitionists and Esquire magazine have in common? Nope, that's not a joke. It's what we're talking about on this week's Random Knowledge. I'm Geeks You Drink, Chief Editor Christopher Short. Every year we write 22,000 quiz questions, 20 words each. Some of those stories deserve more time, so we made a video series. We're Geeks You Drink and we read the politics. This is Random Knowledge. The First Amendment came to the Postal Service in 1835 with America's very first direct mail campaign. It must have taken an awful lot of effort, but some New York abolitionists put together a list of Southern religious and civic leaders for a massive propaganda mailing they called the Great Postal Campaign. It seemed like a safer way to influence the South than, you know, actually going down there. The mail's arrival in Charleston, South Carolina set off a predictable ruckus. Though federal postal law guaranteed delivery, Postmaster General Amos Kendall ultimately said Southern offices could refuse to deliver the pamphlets. States' rights, y'all. Cue the mobs burning literature in the streets, along with effigies of Northern abolitionists, even though tiki torches weren't a thing yet. The whole episode led to a few legislative attempts to censor the mail, which came to nothing until 1870, that is, when we got the infamous Comstock Laws. Named for a fantastically mutton-chopped postal inspector, Those laws banned Americans from mailing anything obscene, including any information about the burgeoning contraception industry. Deeply controversial from the beginning, the Comstock laws mostly came off the books by the 1930s, after Margaret Sanger had a conviction overturned while doing her life's work that eventually became Planned Parenthood. So what about Esquire? By the time the 40s rolled around, newspapers and magazines could get special postal rates if they met certain conditions, including dissemination of information of a public character. The Postmaster General at the time, Frank Walker, wanted to revoke Esquire's license because all those Varga Girl pen-ups were just too damned stimulating, and so the government was effectively subsidizing smut. He set up an obscenity hearing, which Esquire won, but Walker refused to comply with the verdict. His argument? It didn't have enough information of a public character. In other words, it wasn't substantive enough. And this was a guy who owned movie theaters. Eventually, the Supreme Court unanimously found in favor of Esquire. The Postmaster General doesn't have the power to determine what's good or bad in a magazine, or as the majority opinion put it, what seems to one to be trash may have for others fleeting or even enduring value. With the floodgates open, we quickly found out that a lot of America's enduring values involve porn. Surprise. Now that you know how the sausage is mailed, you have an answer you can use at the Geeks Who Drink quiz. Check out geekswhodrink.com to find out where you can play. And for now, please do give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, and then draw a dirty cartoon on a postcard and send it to your mom. Legally, she can't stop you.